Today we're going to learn how to factor quadratics with a lead coefficient of 1. So the first thing I want you to notice is that we have three terms. And one of the big things about the type of problem we're doing here is that the front term is a 1. In other words, this first part, the a part, has a 1 in front of the x, or it's just, it just x squared, right? It's not 7x squared. So we're going to talk a little bit more in a different video about how we're going to solve it if it had a 4 here. But since it doesn't have a 4 there, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take a look at the c term, the third term, and we're going to, one, list factor pairs of c. Okay, so since 2 is prime, uh, all of the factor pairs of C are 1 and 2. 1 times 2 equals 2. So a factor pair is just a pair of numbers that multiplies to give me the number that I'm, I'm factoring. So once we list all the numbers, then we're going to 2, we're going to find a pair that sums, that means it adds up to, and I'm going to say to B, which means to the middle term. So obviously we have 1 times 2 is 2, and then we know that 1 plus 2 is 3. So once we know that, we can go ahead and write the factor pairs and we can write the factors and the factors are usually written as parentheses times parentheses so when we look at this one what we're going to end up with is parentheses times parentheses and it's x's so i'm going to put an x in each of them and then my two numbers are one and two so it's one and two and then they're both positive so i'm going to do one plus one plus two and I end up with this answer right here. Now that probably feels a little bit weird. If this is the first time you factored, this is going to feel a little bit uncomfortable. Because up until this point, we usually make things simpler, right? We multiply and get rid of parentheses. But when we factor, we're actually creating parentheses. Let's go ahead and look at another example. We have our A, B, and C terms. And once again, we can see that we're going to try to multiply. Uh, what multiplies to give us 11? Well, 1 and 11, that multiplies to give us 11, right? 1 times 11 equals 11. And 1 plus 11 equals 12. Sweet. So we found a number that multiplies to give me C and adds to give me B. And that's exactly what we're looking for. So we can go ahead and write our answer. U plus 1, and u plus 11. Now, a lot of times, if this is the first time you've done factoring, what people ask me is, wait, what are we doing? Why are we doing this? And for today's lesson, I just want you to get the skill down, and we'll apply it uh, in the near future. But right now, this is the process. That's it. We're done. Let's pick uh, one that's not so obvious. Maybe this one throws us for a loop. So I'm going to do A, B, and C. And again, we have our 1 here, so we can ignore that. We know right off the bat that our answer is going to be Y something and uh, Y something. I need all the factor pairs of 10. Well, 1 and 10. And But this time, if I look at 1 times 10 is 10, but 1 plus 10 equals 11. And so that's not what we want. What we're looking for is 7. So what about 2? Two? 2 plus 5 is 7. And 2 times 5 is 10. So we have our factor pairs. 2 times 5 is 10. And 2 plus 5 is 7. So our two numbers are 5 and 2. They're both positive. So we can go ahead and put them right there. And that's that. Now surely you say this must get a little bit more difficult because this seems a little silly at this point. So I'm going to throw a couple ones at you. Number four, first thing you should notice is that we have a negative 
it says minus 18p. Okay, so that's important. Uh, so first we're going to go ahead and list all the factor pairs. 17 is 1 times 17. But the problem is if I were to add 1 and 17 together, I don't get negative 18. I get positive 18. So we have to do something a little tricky here. Um, there are no other factors. 1 and 17 are the only two numbers that multiply to 17, except negative 1 and negative 17 multiply to positive 17. And negative 1 plus negative 17 equals negative 18. So our two numbers are actually both negative because they multiply to a positive, so they cancel out, but they still add to a negative. So our answer is going to end up being P minus 1 and P minus 17 because they're both negative. Number 5, we don't have any negatives, but I'm going to go ahead and look at 20. 20's got a lot of factor pairs. I'm going to list all of them. I'm going to list uh, 1 and 20, and that doesn't add up to 12, uh, 2 and 10, and 3 and, oh, I don't know, 3 doesn't work, uh, 4 and 5, uh, 6 doesn't go in, 7 doesn't go in, all I've got, this is it, uh, 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 4 and 5, I guess I could do 5 and 4, but we kind of repeat after that point. Uh, hopefully we can tell that this pair is the pair that adds to 12, so my answer is Oop, not y. If you get the variable wrong, it's still wrong. Uh, j plus 2 and j plus 10. Number 6. Number 6, I have a negative, but this time the negative is over here. And that's going to change things a little bit. So I need to find all my factor pairs that make negative 13. Well, 13 is prime, so negative 1 and 13 and then negative 13 and 1. So one of them has to be a negative if it multiplies to give me a negative. Which one of these two gives me a positive 12? Well, it, since it's positive, the big number must be positive, positive 13. G minus 1. G plus 13. Number 7. Number seven, they're both negative. So again, I need two numbers that multiply to give me negative 16. Uh, negative 1 and 16, but those don't give me 6. Negative 16 and 1 still doesn't give me 6. Uh, negative 2 and 8. That looks closer, except that gives me positive 6. Uh, so negative 8 and 2 gives me negative 6. And that's the number I'm going to go with. So I'm going to go with x minus 8 and x plus 2 because the 2 isn't negative. Let's close out with one last problem, f squared minus f minus 2. So if we were to look at this, remember that we said a, b, and c. And we look at these types of problems this way because we have no number out front. Well, we have a 1. In the same way, this negative f means we have a negative 1 right there. Okay, so I need all the numbers that multiply to negative 2. So 1 and 2 are the only two numbers, but it's either 1 and negative 2 or negative 1 and positive 2. Which one adds to give me negative 1? So I can go ahead and write my solution as f plus 1 and f minus 2. One last point of clarity is that these two can go in either order. It doesn't matter which order they go in. So you could put f minus 2 times f plus 1 or vice versa. That is how you factor quadratics with a lead coefficient of 1.